Great, thanks. Okay, so is everybody now seeing a screen that looks like a kind of Greenwich web page? Yeah, yeah. Greenwich Poll yes. works. Great, okay. So we're gonna get started then. Um, oops. Uh, thank you everybody. Don't wanna do that. Uh, <clears throat> thanks everybody for coming. You've been chatting with <coughs> Mary Hegarty, the Democratic Registrar of Voters. And I'm Fred DiCaro, the Republican Registrar of Voters. And we are going to be training you uh, tonight, both seasoned and new official checkers. Um, before I get into the training packet, I wanted to point out that if you go to our website, which is greenwichct.gov slash vote. Okay, you will see here, I want to work at the polls. And then you will see poll worker training materials. <clears throat> Under that, you see <coughs> a section, official checker. Okay, book checker, that's you. Okay, um, we are uh, going to post the recording for that training here. And all of the worksheets and handouts and the PowerPoint we use are also right here for you to um, take a look at. Okay, so I'm gonna actually use the one called Official Checker Presentation this evening. And I'm actually gonna pull that up on the screen right now. Okay. So official checkers are trained separately in a one hour class. Sorry, hours spelled wrong. I can't believe we use this all oh. this year and you never noticed that. I'm gonna take credit for that, yeah. <laughs> there's, um, now, usually we tell you how there's lots of counting to do before the voting starts and after the voting ends. <coughs> Hopefully with the, the addition of technology, we've solved some of that, okay? and. Um, as you know, what usually happens is you check off people and it's, um, you know, a pretty common standard check off. A couple of the other things that you do are to um, uh, inactivate voter, or work with inactive voters, transfers, and on very rare occasions, additional <laughs> ballots and challenge ballots. Okay. So... Okay, um, let's see here. Uh, you will sit right next side, aside the um, unofficial checkers who are also called the electronic checkers or e poll book checkers. They are trained separately. I trained some of those in person, new ones on their computers about two hours ago and I'll be training more in in-person classes in front of the computers in small groups. Um, <clears throat> uh, and they also will have a Zoom session for those who are seasoned in the position. Um, they have complete voter lists on their computers, which can be useful for finding the party of a registered voter in primary disputes, or if somebody's in the wrong polling place. Remember your book is specific to your line whereas they can look up voters uh, anywhere throughout town. So what does a page look like in your book? It looks like this. Um, and as the, sorry, there's someone coming in here. Okay. And as the day progresses, uh, you will be crossing people off and such. And this nice pristine page will get to be um, busier and busier as you add absentees, as you write people in, as you delete people, provisional ballots, cross-offs, etc. Your book will look like this by the end. 
Okay, although hopefully with more people voting, more, more of those red cross-offs. Now, when we, <clears throat> what we do is we attempt to, to show you from a conceptual standpoint, we write a bunch of numbers in the corners to help you uh, balance a little bit better and figure out your numbers at the end of the day. And we were pretty successful with that in the presidential election. Um, in the primary, we our printing program failed. So we went back to the old one and people said, hey, what happened? We really liked some of those numbers you had printed in the book. Um, well, we've, we've been testing it and we should be back to our new improved uh, uh, paper poll books for November. And what happens with those is rather than you having to count in the morning the number of eligible voters on a page, that data will automatically be printed up here, as will the number of red, excuse me, is it red A's? Yes, red A's at the beginning of the day, mm -hmm. and as well as the number of voters eligible to vote by tabulator. Those early morning numbers will already be there for you, okay, which hopefully will make your day uh, uh, you know, start off a little more smoothly. So <clears throat> now what happens during the day is basically a set of either checkoffs or special circumstances. Now the checkoff is easy. You're basically just as someone comes in and announces themselves, they announce themselves by their street they live on and the number and then their name. Okay. They're, they're supposed to be in a line related to the street. Our, our polling places are sorted <coughs> by street, not alphabetically. That is how the law reads in Connecticut, and that's how we do it. So um, crossing someone off is pretty straightforward. I'll show you a simulation in a little bit. But we're going to focus today on the more unusual tasks that happen during the election because they're the ones where you really need training, not crossing off a voter. So the first of that would be inactive voters, okay? An inactive voter is someone who, um, for some reason, Mary and I believe no longer lives at their location. It could be because they haven't voted in a successive number of years, and we've tried to contact them and we've gotten no response. It could be because the post office has told us so. It could be because some other sources uh, that we uh, subscribe to, um, both state and nationwide, have told us this person is registered somewhere else. So if a person comes to you on the official checker line and they are not, uh, don't appear in your book, you refer them to the moderator and the moderator will take a look to see if they're on the inactive list. If they are, those voters will fill out a new voter registration card in a primary, which is this is not a primary, they must select the same party. And of course, unaffiliated voters can't be on a primary. Um, that won't be an issue for a November election. Anybody can be stored on, in the November election. So what do you do now <clears throat> with your page, well, you're going to write the person in and then you would cross the per person off. Now, in this case, <clears throat> I've restored a person, okay? And so when we do that, you'll remember in the upper left-hand corner, that represents the number of people who are eligible to vote on this page. So we've increased that number by one so as a result, we had to put a little plus one here. And you'll, for those of you who are new, you'll understand why that is as the um, day goes on. You'll notice also that <clears throat> there's some other notations that have been added uh, to the book. So the three is the number of red A's when the book started. Okay, when it was printed up, that's the number of people who had already voted by absentee ballot and been checked off as having voted. During the day, more people will vote by absentee and will be sending lists to the polling places. Okay, 
those folks are marked off with a blue A. And you can see these folks down here on Norton Lane as an example. Okay. And <clears throat> so when someone is um, added as having voted by absentee, then we have to indicate up here that they voted by absentee. So we add two in the upper right hand corner. And in the lower left hand corner, we're subtracting two people because this number represents the number of people eligible to vote by machine. Okay. By the way, that plus one that just got added down there, that was from me finishing off with um, Ms. Smith. We added her and we had to add her on the top and on the bottom. Now, I didn't cross Ms. Smith off in this particular case because I'm going to use her for other examples. Um, but of course, if she were there, you would simply cross her off when she was restored from inactive. There are other situations such as 18 year olds who may um, arrive at the book, you arrive at the polls um, who just had their birthday, or there may be um, people who just registered to vote in the last week because they moved into town. Those people will also be written into the book and that's why I left Joan Smith here as an example of that. Okay, so inactivating and reactivating folks is probably the most common of the special occurrences during the day. You will definitely see a couple of those uh, as the day progresses. The next thing that happens is voters move in town and they have not informed us in the registrar's office. So those voters, um, need to be transferred. Most likely, they're going to come to their new polling place because all their neighbors said, oh, well, in North Miami, we all go to the North Miami school. So they go there and they say, hey, you know, I usually vote in New Lebanon, but I've moved over to North Miami. What do I do? So at the new polling place, the moderator will call the old polling place to verify the voter has not voted. They'll instruct the official checker, that's you, to write the person's name in the book. And then you'll cross them out as having voted. Sorry. Um, and the electronic checker next to you will also require assistance in checking off that person. They'll need a password and some authorization. And of course, they've gone through their own training process. So looking at that here, so that was at the new polling place. And we'll show you what happens in both polling places in a second on the actual paper checker book. So at the old polling place, they'll receive the call from the moderator at the new place indicating and they need to verify the voter has not voted. The official checker in the old um, polling place will write DEL for delete next to the voter's name, but they will not cross off the voter. And the electronic checker makes no changes. It all happens, it's all initiated on the new side. So what does that look like here? So you'll see Priscilla Stern at 31 Northridge Road is no longer there. So we have written D-E-L next to her name and not crossed her off. Um, and we've also then subtracted her. You'll notice that minus one up here because she's no longer eligible on the page. And we subtracted her down at the bottom as well. Okay, so... I had a quick question, Fred. Sure. Yes. Um, so I understand the upper left corner and the lower left corner, but I'm still trying to understand the upper right corner, that two plus three. Can you just review that? Maybe I missed it, but I just sure. understand the upper right corner. Sure. So um, the, let's see, this is slide 10 to go back. If you look um, earlier in the deck, okay this is sort of a legend of what each of those numbers represent. 
So oh, right. it represents the number of folks who have voted by absentee ballot. Okay? okay. So what happens is when you first get the book, there'll be a set of pre-printed red A's and that number will be pre-printed. And then as you mark people off, you'll be putting in blue A's and you'll continue to increment that number up. Okay, that's very helpful. But we get a sample sheet like that to have with us during the day. Yes, so okay. <laughs> um, you, you may have, you have missed that, that part. So if you go to our website and you go to the poll worker instruction section, copies of this presentation and <laughs> copies of the handouts and other cheat sheets are all there for you to download. Thank okay. you. Sure. All right. I'm not going to go over a provisional ballot because there are none in this election. Those are only used in federal elections. So I'm going to skip directly to a challenge ballot. A challenge ballot, I think, I don't believe I've ever seen one in my 13 years uh, in the office. And I think my um, uh, uh, friend, Sharon Vecchiola on the Democratic side, who was there about 10 or 12 years before me, I'm not sure she ever saw one either. So it is an unusual situation because it is a voter, effectively a neighbor challenging another neighbor's um, right to vote. We go over here, and this is a, perhaps more than you need to know, what, you know, the grounds upon which such a challenge can be made. Okay, the moderator makes the decision as to whether the voter may vote regularly or vote by challenge ballot. Um, and there's a set of instructions. The important part for you to know is two things. The first is, number one, if for some reason someone in the polling place comes over in front of you and says, I challenge this voter, you'll need to review, re refer them to the moderator. And on occasion, Mary and I will put a note in your checker book saying, please refer this voter to the moderator. And we are challenging them because there's something unusual about their registration. These things usually get cleared up in a matter of minutes upon talking to the moderator, but on occasion we do write that into the book, okay? If however, you do get a challenge ballot, the official checker simply marks CB next to the voter's name but does not cross the name off because technically they have not voted. That ballot is in suspense until a judge makes a decision on it. So how would that look in your book? Basically, you could just see Brett Pate here, a challenge ballot was issued for him, no cross off, okay? So, now, hopefully when you cross people off, you do a little bit neater than I did when I was doing this with my mouse. Okay, we do offer your rulers and other straight edges. It will help you obviously if you use those and your book doesn't look like what I've done here, shame on me. Okay, <clears throat> but here's an example of all the different things that could have happened in your book during the day. So we're gonna take this page and we're gonna pretend this page is your book, okay? That it's a one page book and you only had Northridge Road and a couple of other streets. It was quite an interesting polling place. So we're gonna tally up those numbers in the corners and we're gonna use those to fill out the official checker page in the back of the book. So we started with 61 people on the page. We added one who was Joan Smith, we deleted one, Priscilla Stir. And so our number winds up the same at 61. We had absentee ballots, three in the beginning of the day, we wrote in two more for a total of five. We started the day with 58 people eligible to vote at the tabulator. We subtracted two absentee voters we wrote one person in who was restored at the polls 
and we deleted one, giving us a total of 56 possible crossouts. So if everybody showed up at the polls, okay, who was eligible and didn't vote by absentee, et cetera, and these were all crossed off, this number down here would be 56 or in this corner, okay? But in this case, it's just five because we have five cross-offs, okay? Now, seasoned book checkers will tell you, especially in a busy book, don't count all of the, the, the cross-offs together. Count column one and count column two and add them together so that it's easier because it's a lower number and you're less chance of um, getting confused and losing your place on the count. Okay, so there were two here, there were three cross-offs here, gives a total of five. Okay. And again, just to put the concept back with the numbers, we started with 61, five absentees, total of 56 eligible to vote by the tabulator, which is just 61 minus five. And then the number of in-person votes cast five. I'm going to skip that for a second and show you the worksheet now at the back of your book. Okay. So at the back of the book, there'll be this revised worksheet as I believe we call it. And um, uh, what, what we have done is we have basically, we're asking you a bunch of items from uh, questions from the work that you've done on those other pages. Um, and this is important because at the end of the day, Mary and I have to report not just the number of votes cast, but also the number of people who came by and were checked off. So you can imagine if we reported a thousands votes cast, but only 900 people checked off, people might get a little nervous about the state of that election. So it's important those numbers match. If a thousand people put ballots through the machine, we should have checked off a thousand people. So your accuracy along with that of the other official checkers is important. Now, where do these numbers come from? So how many names did you add to your book? Well, we know from our sheet Okay, that you'll remember we added up, we added one. It was a plus one. Okay, and if there were many pages, we'd have to go in and we'd have to check all of the people that we wrote, you know, wrote in, et cetera, and add those up. How many names did you delete from your book? You remember we deleted that one name. How many names in your book after the polls closed? That is simple mathematics. You add line one to line two and subtract line three, 61 plus one minus one still gives you 61. How many absentee ballots in your book? Five. Remember we had three red A's and two blue A's. And how many strike throughs in your book? Five. Now, I'm gonna stop here for just a second because we need to create a fast quiz for those people who are listening to this and did not come to the original um, uh, meeting and are watching the recording. So we want to test to make sure that <clears throat> they're listening. And so we're going to create a secret word, which I'm only going to say, I'm not going to put on the screen. And the word is water glass, two words, water glass. So if somebody is listening to this recording and paying attention, they need to tell Tracy and Lynn that they watched and the first clue was water glass. And then we know they're paying attention. And Mary, try and think of something for a little later on and try and remind me to do another one of these okay. towards the end. Sure. Okay, and that one will display on the screen. We'll do one shown and one just audio only. All right, so getting back to the, um, the class itself. 
um, everybody fills out this worksheet. There's one in the back of every book, and then you sign your book. You sign your book as the official checker, and the two assistant registrars sign. There's another spot for an official checker. We had no idea what this was for for the longest time. And we're, we were having the uh, people from the other line sign the book, and we just couldn't understand. Well, finally, we realized that in some towns, they actually split the day and have two official checkers. How that book could balance at the end of the day, I'm really not sure, having two different people going through it. But nevertheless, it is done in some small towns. We do not do it. So at the end of the day, yours will be the only checker signature on that book. Now, I skipped a couple of slides, and I want to go back to them. And those slides relate to 17-year-olds, um, okay? So someone who, when we printed these books, okay, <clears throat> was 17 and had not yet turned 18, will not appear in the front of the book um, as an eligible voter. However, they can vote, okay, um, if their birthday has arrived by election day. So you can see I made this example back in 2016, and election day was November 8th. So what we were looking for is we were looking for any birthdays that were before 11-8-2016, or in this case, 11 8 1998 and you can see there were numerous, okay, because this was a presidential year and a lot of kids pre-registered. All of those um, um, folks who pre-registered pre and have these effective dates that were before November 8th, okay, they can vote. Now, when someone comes to the polling place, you're not going to look at it and say to yourself, well, that looks like a young person. Maybe they're in the back of the book. Okay, that is um, silly, and and you know it can lead to um, turning somebody away in case you forget. So, if you have a list like this in your book, take the names and write them in early in the morning. Write them in on the streets they go on, so you do not have to look at this sheet during the day. Okay, and once you write them in, remember to increment up the number of people on the page, but that basically means this page will not be in use during the day. Um, it's just additional voters who we've informed you are eligible to vote. Likewise, there will be another page. Yeah, um, not this one. I have a supplemental here? I guess not. Well, it'll look, it'll look very similar to this page, but it will say supplemental list. And um, those will be people who registered to vote after we printed the books. So there will not be a lot of them. There will just be a handful. And in some cases, there won't be any. We will have emailed them the night before the election to your moderator. And if there are any, he will print them out, he or she, We'll print them out and give them to you. And again, you can write them into your book. Okay. So, um, so you may have a page that says other voters, no privileges, etc. Or you might have a page which says supplemental list. In both cases, write them in. The other thing that you may have, uh, shucks, we don't have an example of that either, is that there will be uh, folks, and there's more and more of these because the law is changing to accommodate more and more situations. There are folks who are eligible to have their address hidden, okay, for personal safety reasons. So what happens is when they come to the polling place, okay, they do not have to get into a particular line Okay, and they won't announce their address. They'll have a yellow card that comes from the Secretary of the State's office. And, you know, those who work 
the polls regularly will see these people on a regular basis because many of them are very good voters and they'll get in any line and they may get in a different line every time just to throw off somebody who's monitoring it and their name will be in the back of the book and it will say um, next to their their name it will say address suppressed they are crossed off and they are treated just like any other voter but their address is not printed anywhere okay so we went through filling this out also in the back of your book are tally sheets okay so these sheets, there's gonna be two or three of them. Um, we print them and put them in the back of your book for safekeeping so we don't have loose sheets flying around. The ID checker who sits next to you and will ask people to get out their ID, um, they'll ask you for one of these sheets. You just tear it out of the book, it's perforated and give it to them, okay? And there's also a special sheet for ballot clerks you give them that sheet as well. And what will happen is during the day, as folks come in, they will tally the number of voters. Now this could be very useful for you because ideally the ID checker on one side of you, if they say, well, we had eight people pass by us and the computer checker on the other side of you says, we had eight people pass by us in this hour. If you also have eight people, that's pretty good. And that's a way for you to check on an hourly basis to see how well you're doing, okay? And you just continue to, you know, add it on hour by hour. Okay, so now at the end of the night, there will be someone designated as the recap clerk. And it used to be that we paid the recap clerk extra dollars to basically copy information from the, um, the two or three checker books onto this official certificate. What we've decided now is we raise the checker pay so everybody um, is responsible for that, okay? Um, so, and everybody is equally responsible to sort of uh, hang around in case there is an issue related to that. So what, but there'll be one person who'll be appointed to recap clerk and their job is basically to take the numbers from books, the two books and copy them into this worksheet. Okay. Now, where do they get those numbers from? Well, they're from that worksheet that we went through before. And it actually says to you specifically here, where to get them from, line four from the checkerbook worksheet, line six, line five, and do some math. So if the polling place has two lines, then the um, recap clerk will sum the numbers from the two lines. If the polling place has three lines, they would sum all three. We used to, before highlighting the importance of this, have folks who would just like, write their books numbers in and forget about their neighbors and stuff like that. That just makes a mess for us. And poor Lynn Giacomo, who is um, Mary's assistant, has to sit there very late at night attempting to recount all of this stuff. Um, and that, of course, makes us sad and makes us not want to invite that person back in the future. So we do appreciate it if you would spend the time to Double check your book and make sure that things seem logical in it before handing it in, right? So for instance, um, the number of names of people in the book should obviously be more than the number of people of votes cast, right? Um, just simple logical checks like that. So you see, we're just summing those numbers. The recap clerk signs, the assistant registrar signs. And that is the end of the formal part of our presentation. Now, it's a couple of tips and tricks that we wanted to uh, point out to you. 
So the first relates to the computer checker. Okay. So, uh, Fred, before we sure. start on the computer checker, shall we put our second uh, quiz question in at this point? Sure. It's a great idea. I was toying with glass of wine, but I settled on cup of coffee. Cup of coffee. All right. So now, mm -hmm. in order to make that happen here, I'm going to very quickly pull something up. We've said it, but we're going to put it on the screen also. So that's the answer to quiz question number two. So if you're if you're not here in the original, sign up. <clears throat> Remember to write down quiz que uh, quiz question number two is cup of coffee. Okay. All right, so getting back to our training materials, um, um, the electronic checker. So the electronic checker has um, uh, a way to help you and there's a way for you to help them. Now you are the official checker, which means there's a lot more pressure on you because yours is the official record of the election. There's a lot of convenience in using the um, electronic notebooks to record things. And we do it because it's great to report data to the press and stuff. But in the end, if there are discrepancies, the paper book wins. That's not to say the paper checker doesn't necessarily make a mistake, but if we can't reconcile it, we always fall back on the paper book. So, what are a couple of situations where you can mutually help each other? The first is if for some reason, and this is very rare, but if for some reason one of the computers goes down, okay, and that person cannot check voters off for a few minutes, we do not hold up the line. When we first introduced them, we hadn't really thought this through and you know, the checker grabbed some scrap paper and they were trying to write down the names of the folks, et cetera. And so we eventually came up with a nice low tech solution. In the envelope that you're gonna be handed at the beginning of the day, we used to put them in the goodie totes, but now we're just giving you each one at the beginning of the day. There'll be a purple highlighter, okay? <clears throat> if for some reason the computer checker cannot check off voters, the line continues to move, but rather than you cross the voter's name off, you highlight them with the purple highlighter. And now what happens is when the computer comes back online, during your free moments, you just go to the first page of the book, start looking for those visual cues of purple highlights, give that name and address to the computer checker. And as they check them off, you cross them off too. And once you've crossed off all of the folks that were purple highlighted, you guys will be back in sync. So that's very, very helpful for the computer checker in case they go down for any period of time, which again, is not something that happens on a regular basis. The second thing is, um, they have, we have added to their computers a report, and I have trained them tonight and will continue to train them how to use that report um, and how to pull it up so that you can both see um, easily who has been crossed off. So they have a report, it's called the Who Voted Report. And basically, let's see, maybe while I'm talking, I can... Uh, <clears throat> up here or pull up something similar to it let's see um so, so the who voted report is basically says um 
it, it only has the people who have been crossed off. Okay, so they can pull that up and rather than go through it and just try and count the names or say, all right, well, I have John Smith on Lions Street and, you know, Joan Smith, uh, you know, at, at, at um, you know, Leonardo Street, et cetera, and go through. What I suggested is you basically go through and just quickly summarize the number of voters on the street and say like, all right, I have six voters on Lion Street. Check, I have six voters too. I have 11 voters on Sheep Hill Road. I have, count it up, I have 11 also. And so that way you can more quickly, without knowing the particular name, make a determination whether or not you have a match. If you have a match, um, uh, you keep on moving. If you don't have a match, you could stop and look at the individual names. I see a hand has been raised by KWSCT. That's me, Kim, Kim Smith. Hi, Kim. How you doing? Great. I just, I just wanted to mention, you were saying something about the, the computers not going down. And if there was anyone here that was new, I just want you to know that that's happened in two of the last four elections for me. So it was, it's not uncommon. And you were at District 8? I was at uh, JC okay. when it happened once. I think I was at uh, uh, the Western Civic Center when it happened, it happened there. So okay. um, yeah, so it's, and it's, it definitely is painful when it happens for us, for the, um, for the official checkers because of that dual process you have to go through. So there were, um, there were a couple of things that we've changed, and I think both, or in at least one of those cases, the, the problem started right away in the morning. And what we found was, and now when the, the uh, electronic checkers are trained, we found that they cannot wait until six o'clock to turn their computers on. They're told they need to have their computers on no later than 5.40 a.m. because that <laughs> synchronizes the data Okay, and what happened is in the presidential election, for example, there was so much data that had changed since we had originally loaded the computers, that right. it wasn't synchronized when they started. So now we're um, actively, you know, making sure that they understand that. And I'm hoping you won't have that problem again. But Kim, I would appreciate it if you do, if you would personally let me know, because I'd like okay. to understand that, you know, because, you know, sometimes... We may not hear that there's a problem until e e later on, or we may just not, not hear at all because someone may not think to, to let us know. So please, right. um, please don't hesitate. To... It happened in the last, the one, the special election. Hmm. I'm okay. sure you're, you're aware of that, right? I was aware of one in district. I think it was in district eight. We had a computer that had a problem either in seven or eight, but I, I'm not aware of one of Julian Curtis, no. Yeah, yeah, it was it was brutal. <laughs> it was brutal. It oh, happened, very, and then it was very slow. slow. And, it was hmm? super slow. Was that what? It oh was? my! It was yeah. brutal. It's brutal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we did have the manufacturer go through that and test that test that with us, and he's actually going to be in our office. The guy who wrote the software on election mm -hmm. day. Sometimes they can make a tweak right on election day. Sometimes we prefer they don't make that tweak because we don't want anything worse to happen. Right. But yes, you're, I know that you're right. There was um, a slowness and that did occur in a, a lot of places. Yeah, okay, great. So back to the purple uh, highlighter, uh, to have it ready at the very beginning of the day when that it really is when a lot of the problems could occur uh that would be right and also to know to start to use it i think that was also part of the problem is that it was it it um we were they were falling behind and um we didn't move to that process immediately and we had lines and yes yeah so yeah getting to that kind of a process more quickly it i think helps and um and then also remember, you know, because we didn't, we don't emphasize that that much because we don't think it's going to happen. You're like, uh, 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 now what should we do? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, the purple highlighter. So anyway, 
Um, can I just add that um, I was in Riverside, uh, I've been in Riverside. We always have computer problems. There you it, go. Oh, Good. It always <laughs> goes down. And I okay. have that purple highlighter ready to go. And uh, we, I think we were assuming that you guys saw the book and saw the purple highlighter and would think, what the heck is going on in Riverside? What, what's with the purple highlighter? And I thought also that the moderators were making notes in their book. Right. That's a good to fact. I'm glad to hear that from someone else. So, oh yeah, yeah. and it's, it's a bit, it is a pain, but the purple highlighter works. It works really great if you have right. it sitting on your desk and just start highlighting. It works. It's, yeah. Well, this is very helpful. So this is a sample of the the report that the computer checker can pull up, um, which is just called the Who Voted report. So it only shows people who have been crossed off. And it shows them in street order. So one can quickly scan and say, all right, I have three on Brookside Drive and I have two on Butler Street, one on Byram Shore, one on Byram, et cetera, to, to make a determination where you where you may um, be off. Um, they Fred, was this, I'm sorry, was this not working in August because we couldn't get this report to come up? My computer person had no idea how to get this. And after investigating, we were told it wasn't available. I don't know. I, why don't you um, drop me a note offline on if you remember who your computer person was and I'll do some personal training related to that. I can also go look, um, Mary, if you wouldn't mind, uh, Mary Hegarty, if yeah. you wouldn't mind taking a look, we can kind of see, figure out it's not that hard who the electronic checkers were and just make sure we reach out to all of them from that district. Because uh, this is really helpful if you if you find that when you're doing your tally marks and you're checking every few times during the hour and you're, you're, the official checker is off from the, um, uh, the computer and, and from the other folks in the line, it's, it, this would be a great means of, of uh, reconciling. Yes, but we, we weren't able to get it up. And if she did stray from her normal screen of checking people off as having voted, the computer would crash. So we were afraid to do anything. <laughs> so I had the same problem as well. If they tried to stray, if they went to go right. check something else, it was. Yeah. So I would definitely say the computers are are a problem. They're not, you know, they don't seem to be moving quickly enough or they crash or. Yeah. So I agree. Same thing. Okay, well, we have made some changes to the program since the special election. I would love to get feedback good for good or ill after November related to this. Okay. 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 Thank you. All right. Um, <clears throat> Mary, I didn't have anything else. Did you want to talk about COVID safety a little bit? Or? Um, well, um, just, I guess, one thing to mention for people who've worked in the past and had food supplied at the polling places, once again, we're asking poll workers to bring their own uh, cups of coffee and uh, food uh, for the day. You will be paid um, an extra $15 to cover that. Um, the policy, as everybody knows, is masks are required. So there should be enough people at your polling places that you can um, ask to take a break when you need to take a break. And one of the assistant registrars um, would usually be the person who would fill in for you. Um, I think I think we're getting, unfortunately, we're getting very used to running elections with the uh, COVID situation. So I can't think of anything else in particular, if, if anybody has any questions related to that. So we will, I'll, I'll just, if there are questions, just shout them out or you can raise your electronic hand if you so choose, whatever you like. The, um, what I would uh, just wrap up with then is um, we will be taking this recording and we'll be posting it on YouTube in the next 24 hours. A link will go on that poll worker page if you wanted to review 
anything. And we are also having a Q&A, which you are welcome to come to. It is primarily designed for people who watch the recording. But if you um, uh, decide that you have an additional question, you're welcome to come to that Q&A uh, next week. I'm trying to see if I can find the, the date of it real quickly. Um, it uses the exact same Zoom information. So you can just save that, uh, that information to get to it. And I'm just looking up the, the date real quick. Obviously not as quickly as I'd like. <laughs> All right, just a quick question while you're looking sure. for that. Yes. Are voters required to wear a mask? Voters uh, are to, respectfully um, asked to wear a mask. Well, but they they're not are, required. Well, in the schools, everybody is required to wear a mask, but uh, the Secretary of the State of Connecticut has made clear a number of times that um, people cannot be deprived of their right to vote simply because they're unwilling to wear a mask. So the policy that Fred and I feel is best is to, there will be plenty of masks there both um, for poll workers and also for voters who um, may arrive without a mask. They may have just forgotten their mask. Um, some voters, not very many, we found just a handful are insistent that they don't mm -hmm. want to wear a mask. It's re it's really a very small number. <laughs> They're usually um, loudly insistent that they well, don't want to wear a mask. So what we what we think is the best approach is, of course, they can and should be offered a mask. But if they are, you know, make it clear that's not going to be happening, just to handle that voter in the fastest, uh, most efficient calm and right. um, just get them through the process. You can take, uh, the moderator would be handling this or one of the assistant registrars. Right. And they would probably take them to directly to uh, the official, you know, the ID checker and the official checker, right, you know, move them to the front of the line. Very unfairly, of course, but there, still, there usually I, isn't a line. That's for everyone. Weird and then move them through the process as, as fast as possible. Really just get them in and out as calmly and quickly as possible. Right, and, and you'll go over that in the registrar's training? Yes. Okay, thank you. So we have two more hands up. First, let me announce, so the, the, um, the Q&A is next Tuesday night at 7 p.m. And we start it promptly at seven, and we run until uh, we run until the last question is answered, or seven fifteen, whichever comes later. Okay, so if nobody come, nobody shows up. Okay, at seven fifteen, we say bye bye. But if there's still people with questions, we run it as long as necessary. So I'm going to start. Kim had another question, and then Sandra. Yeah, um, I well, I had a question with re, when you were just now talking about the mask. I, I at the last election, I thought they were like taking them outside, taking them, taking the ballot to them or something. Oh, okay. Well, that Did is that change. It, it, it's not that that has changed, but um, you possibly could have a voter who is not interested in an alternative method of voting, and that's really what I was addressing. But if a voter just uh, does not, is happy to vote outside the polling place that would require um, the two assistant registrars, one from each party to um, bring a ballot to that voter and outside. And that can be done as well. Okay. And um, the other thing, I just had a general comment um, that, that um, at the last election, we had a few people who had been bounced around from polling place to polling place. So I just wanted to be sure, I know that in the training that, you know, that, and so by the time they get to the third polling place, they're pissed. And so um, 
you know, hopefully we have some sort of procedure in place so that they're not, that doesn't happen. So when they wind up at the wrong ballot place that they're, you know, that there is not a, I think you vote here, there's a definitive answer for them. So every yeah. moderator has a tool that they can use on their phone to look up any voter and tell them what polling place they go to. So if that voter's registration information is correct and they haven't moved, that should that should not happen, um, but you know I can understand sometimes there are situations with election day registration or other things like that where there could be some confusion. But in general, if someone is a regularly registered voter, okay, um, and we and they we know where they are if they have not moved, they always go to the same place. So chances are something special also happened with that voter to create the situation. Yeah, it was a few voters. That's why I'm bringing it up. So I just wanted to be sure that, um, mm -hmm. that there was some process in place to address that so that, because like I said, once they get up to us, they're mad, you know? <laughs> so when they, we look it up and we're like, oh, mm -hmm. sorry, this is, you're not on our list. Now. This is the third place I've been to, so yeah. Okay. Could I uh, interrupt here just to ask who Tony is for my list? I just see the first name, Tony. Zegris. Sorry, Zegris. I'm here. Zegris. Z-E-G-R-A-S. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Sandra Thurman had a question. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, will there be boxes of masks at the polling place so that we can hand out masks to people who forgot them but would like to have one? Yes. We will be able to provide masks to people then? Yeah, absolutely, yes. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. And Calissa has a question. Um, hi. Um, yeah. So my, I haven't worked um, through this COVID era. So my question, what if there's other participants there that are aggravated that other people are not wearing masks? Like yeah. people in the line, they're aggravated. Like, why isn't that person wearing a mask? What yeah. about that? What about that? What do we do in that situation? Yes, I do think that the moderators and the assistant registrars who Fred and I will be talking to them about this exact situation. I think that they understand that just to maintain the calm of the uh, polling place is key to everybody's, uh, I mean, sure, people may be a little frustrated, but I think most people understand <coughs> that there are individuals who, um, for whatever reason, might choose to make a a point inappropriately in the polling place. And our point of view is that the best way to handle it is to handle it as swiftly as possible. Otherwise, you're just further- Prolonging uh, everyone's agony. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. And one, one last question. In regards to um, the breaks, um, so does that mean that there's a waiting area outside where we can go take a break or you're saying just eat in your car for a break or how does that work? Right. Well, it depends on your polling. Where are you um, working, Calissa? I don't have the chart with me. Um, I will be Greenwich High School. I mean, Greenwich and Greenwich, uh, 285, South Beach at District 6. Ah, just, okay. So you're at Old Greenwich School. Um, at Old Greenwich School, I believe that there's, well, there's hallways and rooms behind um, the gym area that you should have access mm -hmm. to, or you may be more comfortable going out to your car. Um, I think it will become clear when you're there what, what works best. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. I had a question. Yes. Um, I had a question. So this is my first time being a checker. And 
I wondered how many sheets are in a normal book. We, we just looked at one sheet today, and I am curious as to how many will be in my book. And in addition, I'm wondering how many official checkers will be at the bend time, um, at Western bend time. Two. Mm -hmm. There'll be two lines. And so there's roughly a thousand, excuse me, there's roughly 3,000 people per polling place. So your book will have 1,500 names. Now, you won't be checking off 1,500 people because we only have a 40% turnout in a municipal election. In, a, in the gubernatorial or the presidential election, that polling place is divided into three lines. Okay, and then there's a fewer number because you know, we understand about how many, you know, voters a, a, a checker can can appropriately do during the day and keep the line moving. Okay, no, that's helpful because I, I didn't really know what I was looking at and I knew it was only one sheet. Yeah. Right. Yeah, no, there'll be, and a I'll have a whole bunch of other brothers one. and sisters with it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Kim, a question. Yeah, I just had one last question. Are we are we, are we fully staffed this time? Because I know in the uh, special election, some of the positions weren't filled. Yes. So, so um, I think both Fred and I are still looking for a few more poll workers. So if anybody has any friends or family who are interested in um, working this election day, please, you know, tell them to contact us. There's also a um, application form that I think probably many of you have filled out in the past on that page that Fred showed you at the beginning of the um, discussion. Uh, the I want to be a poll worker page has a poll worker application. And we get those, if, if somebody fills that form out, we get the form instantly and we'll be, we'll be responding. I'm looking actually for one official checker in, in a district. And I think okay. in district three, um, yeah. which is uh, Western Middle School. So if anybody knows of anyone, that would be great. And okay. I think Fred, you two probably have positions. I, I do, I have a, a ballot. I'm actually looking at what we call our map right now. And I have a, a oh, ballot right. clerk in district eight and an assistant registrar in District 9, which is Bentheim Western Greenwich Civic Center, and, a, and an assistant registrar in District 10, which is Glenville School. So yeah, so I have a couple of, a couple of openings still. Um, and we have, this has been a very challenging election to fill, first of all, because we're requiring everyone to be vaccinated. And secondly, I just think that without the fervor associated with the presidential election, which a lot of people felt like it's so great to be part of the process, they may not remember that there's an election every year. Right. And so many of those people who volunteered last year are not raising their hands again this year. Yeah. So it's unfortunate. Yeah, uh, I agree. I think COVID is causing a lot of people to stop doing things, you know, that, you know, they probably just deem isn't worth the risk, I guess. Um, that, but I, I wanted to say that if you were shorthanded, I, not that I don't have anyone to, to nominate, but um, I realized how important that ID checker role was because we didn't have one <laughs> at the last uh, uh, the special election, and it definitely um, slowed things down. So I, I, that's why I wanted to know if you were going to, if that was going to happen again. We do have ID checkers for this election. Yay. Okay. I'm happy. <laughs> so. But that reminds me of something I wanted to mention um, that had been brought up um, by, I think, a voter in this special election who felt that they had to well, say their name too many times. Now, I don't know. I don't have a great deal of sympathy for that, but I think the better process uh, the voter arrives, they say their um, street name and their name to the ID checker. Um, then they move along because you're somewhat more separated because of COVID from your fellow um, mm -hmm. 
poll workers. Then they move along and they say their name again, possibly if the um, if you, the official checker, hasn't heard the name. Um, then once again to the electronic checker. I think a better system, if it works for you, is for the official checker to be the person who tells the electronic checker the name and repeats repeats the name clearly to the electronic checker. Um, just a suggestion. Well, the the um, the ID checker is on is the first person in line, then the official checker, then the electronic checker. So yes. you couldn't have that. They would be shouting past me to tell the electronic no, I, checker. I'm suggesting that you, the book checker, would say the name, repeat the name clearly so that the electronic checker can hear it. Well, I, yeah, I usually do that. I, the issue was that the we didn't have the ID checker. No, I understand. And so, um, and and that's important because they'll say the, the address and the name, and then I can be looking for it while they're moving down towards me. And then I'll usually be re repeat it to the, um, to the person, to the right. uh, electronic checker at the same time. But, you know, sometimes they, they have to repeat it, you know, hopefully not three times, but sometimes they have to repeat it. Of course. Don't they yeah. show their license? <laughs> they do they show their license but you know you've got a piece of plexiglass in between you right, right? and so sometimes it's not that easy to see let's just hope that we don't have a plexiglass and six foot separating us at future elections and we'll right. get back to, yes. to normal quite frankly because it is it's harder on everybody to yes. do it this way uh, Fred, yeah. um I did the presidential election and that plexiglass made it harder to hear their name. It does. It was easier, it was easier to read the driver's license. Yes. So the ID checker just had him keep it out and put it on the plexiglass for me to read and the same for the electronic checker. It went much faster that way as well. Yes, we do know that plastic makes for, the, it deadens the sound quite a bit, yes. Yeah, yeah that's true, it definitely did. And so is that okay, Richard, to have that ID in front of all three people in a row? Like, is, is that an acceptable workaround? Everyone seemed to acknowledge. I mean, I never had any voter going, I don't want you to see my ID. Right. Well, they well, just moved down the line, you know, actually more quicker that way. Right. Okay. <laughs> so the ID checkers will be trained um, in, a, in a few days by, by Fred and me. And um, there's a whole range of possible IDs that are suitable. And the, license, the driver's license is the one that of course is available to most people and readily used. But it could be that they'll be using something that wouldn't work as well. I, I know that you're all flexible people who will find a way to Right. It works. Yeah, if somebody uses their their town of Greenwich ID, it has no address on it. Right. So there there are other and that's a, an acceptable ID, right? So um, a town employee ID. So there are other things. But again, they're fringe cases. Most of the people they yeah. use something easy to easy to work with. Well, since you're um training the ID checkers, I think that from our perspective, what we want to hear first is the street because that's how the book is organized. Yeah. So to, so I want to hear the street first, then the name, not the name, then the street. Then they, you know, because if they say the name, then the street, then you're, you know, then you're, then you forget the name while you're looking at the street. So give me the street first, mm -hmm. then give me the name. Yes, well, absolutely. That's the order in your book. Right. And that's the order in which it should be announced. But uh, the, what I find works best is just have a conversation with your ID checker and say what you want. Say, I can't hear you. I speak up. I need the street name first. And they're happy to work with you and yes. move the people along. So just have, your, have a conversation with your coworkers and just it'll all work out. That is, that is well said. Very true. Are we done? Um. <laughs> Any other questions or we'll call it a night? That's it for me. Just okay. one question. Where do we put our answers to our quiz? 
You, um, know, you don't have Carolyn, to. Do you don't have to. You don't have to do it because you were in, in attendance. Okay. It's only the people who um, watch the recording who have to answer the quiz. Oh. Yes. <clears throat> now I do. I saw a. Oh no, she's not here now. There was one other name. I just had a first name, but okay. I think I'm pretty good on the list. All right. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank See you. you Thanks. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.